Welcome everybody, PT Pipe Bomb. What's going on, Jim? What's going on with you? Uh, I see you have somebody sitting to your left. Yes, actually, I in fact do. It's the rebirth and the re-something. I forgot the word, but she's here again. The once again vivacious, the non-voracious, bully herself, a Sicilian. And for your knowledge, you dyslexic cocksuckers out there, yes, that's her name backwards. If you figure it out yourself, I don't need to say shit. Well, her name will be in the credits again. Okay, so you can wait to the end of the show and find her name on the credits, you fucking assholes. You might as well say hello. What's up? The opposite of down. I was waiting for him to finish. Well, I'm done. <laughs> well, we have a new segment. We apparently get a new segment like every week. Um, we're doing local news this time. We Very normally good. do viral. We normally do stupid. Um, but I think a lot of our listeners aren't really aware of the shit that happens around them. No, because they're only aware of... Uh... The newest uh, games that are coming out. Or the movie, or the music, or whatever. Or any other millennial bullshit. Alright, so we'll start with one that is coming out of the Port Authority. Ooh. Now, I'll give credit to the New York Post for the article. In which the article is entitled, Man Allegedly Planted a Bomb at Port Authority Bus Terminal. That's nothing surprising the way this world's become. Um, a California drifter left parts to build an improvised explosive device bomb at a busy eatery in the Port Authority bus terminal, hiding them in a piece of luggage. Wow. Now, that is the picture of the guy that did it. Okay. Okay, he's 39 years old, a fugitive from Golden State, that California. Figures. That figures. So was it an actual constructed bomb or just pieces of the bomb in a case? Well, the idiot planted the bag on the first floor of the terminal in the Delhi Plus around 5.15 Wednesday. Well, that place needs to be bombed. Um, it is a mess for all of those non-native New Yorkers that are, oh, don't even see it. Um, a K-9 unit inspected the suitcase, didn't detect, ex didn't detect explosives, but apparently they brought it to a police substation and there was explosive devices in there with a knife, bolt cutters, screwdrivers, and personal hygiene items. So he had intent to use these bomb-making materials. Yes. However, it was not a fully constructed bomb. Correct. Bomb. So but like it was just planted for a scare or something. Later on, they detonated the bomb in Rodman's neck in the Bronx just by applying heat. Wow. So it did blow up. Yes. Only after they took it out of there. Um, apparently the idiot was still there and they found the moron around eight o'clock tonight and then charged him with reckless endangerment, criminal possession of a weapon, possession of burglary tools, criminal possession of a controlled substance. Wow. What but not him? that he was going to blow up a portion of the Port Authority. Shouldn't that be considered somewhere under the Terrorist Act? Uh, yeah, because the MTA, especially a Port Authority, is a uh, federal exactly. transportation. Exactly. The uh, jail, great name, Herb Moses. His name is Herb Moses? Yes. Herb Moses. I'd oh, blow myself Herb. up if that was my name. Um, <laughs> set bail at 500000 but automatically remanded on account of his fugitive status. Unbelievable. Now, apparently this idiot has a criminal record in Oregon, Alaska, Washington State. He's a busy boy. 
and charges included drug possession, stolen property, bad checks, and trespassing. Bad checks. <laughs> um, again, people. So an all-around great guy. Oh, yeah. Sounds like it. The laundry list of, of crimes. Yeah. Um, again, this is why everybody says if you see a bag that looks out of place or it's been there for a while and nobody's really doing anything with it, they're not claiming it, you're supposed to notify people. Um, I don't think the cops was, should have been the first people to find this. But for the fact that that bag has been sitting there, like, all day, and you said, what, like, about 5, 5.30 in the evening they discovered it? Mm-hmm. No one says a goddamn word? Well, you see, that's the problem, though. It's so busy at that time in the Port Authority. Do you really take notice? I know that sounds awful. But do you really take notice of every single bag that's on the floor? Because there's so many people traveling with briefcases and bags and I mean, do you really take notice of any single bag I mean, is there, that's on the floor? Yeah, but if there's any downtime during the day at the Port Authority, because I mean, I know Port Authority is a very busy place, but are people really traveling at all hours of the day? There's got to be some sort of dead time. Well, it's New York City, first off. Um, and how often are you through there to know that five hours later that bag is still there? My, my thing of the, this... First off, it's an eatery. You have to have employees in the eatery that are walking around. Especially the, the low-level the low level guys that are out there emptying garbage cans, cleaning tables, mopping floors. True. I'm pretty sure they should be noticing that this bag has been there for a few hours. Like, I can understand if the bag, if, if this fucking Herb Dick Bull, whatever his name is, I can understand if he planted the bag somewhere on the floor where there are a bunch of people walking around getting to their their bus depots and you know leaving and coming in that i can understand because like you said there's a lot of people walking around there's a lot of people waiting for their buses so there's luggage strewn all over the place but for him to have put it like you said he put it in an eatery someone should have noticed it is it just like you know due to use your word is this a common example of the, the pussification of this world that they see something and they stay quiet now? I don't think so. But knowing the fact that it's a federal building, yeah, um, MTA, uh, Port Authority, um, I, I'm pretty sure they should have had a little bit better control over this. Absolutely. I mean, I've left the bag places, but then I've called to see if anybody's found it or, you know, I've gone back to go see if I can get it. Yeah. But at this point here, I think that's really just, it, it's just ignorance of not keeping an eye on your surroundings. It's ignorance, it's irresponsibility, it's stupidity. So people, you have to be more observant of what your surroundings are. Because if nobody would have found this, and he walked over and he just triggered something in the bag, there'd be a big hole in the ground in the MTA. Hole in the ground and, it, and a nice little body count. So we move from uh, this oxymoron, <laughs> or just moron, uh, to an article that came out at seven o'clock this evening, entitled again from the New York Post: "EMT killed, partner injured after man hits them with stolen ambulance." Oh, the irony! Um, it happened in one of those great boroughs in the Bronx. Um, a man stole an ambulance Thursday and drove into two FDNY medics. Killing one and leaving the other one in serious condition. Jesus. The chaos began when the EMS workers witnessed a man attempting to rob someone near White Plains Road and Watson around 7 p.m. That figures. Uh, medics got out to stop the crime instead of calling the police. <laughs> um, the man then hopped into the vehicle and drove straight into a male medic. A uh, suspect then put the ambulance in reverse, and then crushed the female medic. And she's the one that died. Yes. She was taken to Jacoby Medical Center, where she died. Um, the one who was hit head-on is the one who's still alive? He's in critical condition. Yeah, he's in critical. Jesus Christ. Um, an MTA cop passing by witnessed the mayhem and stopped to apprehend the driver. <laughs> so the guy got caught. Um... But he also did make a quick left turn and then crashed into a parked car, putting the parked car up on the sidewalk. Oh, my God. 
Wow. Um, First of all, my condolences to the family of the EMT that was killed. Absolutely. I'd send both because now you don't know if this guy is going to be alive after the critical condition or not. He could possibly pass away too. I mean, they leave their houses every day and never know what can go on. Scary shit. This is where I think a lot of the... Okay, I might not have the right terminology for it. The public servants of New York City, New York State. Yeah. Um, I don't think they get the credit that they rightfully deserve sometimes. Absolutely not. And especially in this case where it's EMTs trying to stop a crime instead of NYPD. So they're actually doing a public service even though technically it's not their job. Maybe so it's just one of those clear cut cases of not a cop when you need one. Again, if it's something probably that happens out of the blue, you know, you, you, I mean, they're not obviously going to be around for a lot of it, but um, on the spot, I, I give them a lot of credit. Yeah, I give them the credit, too. So, our thoughts go out to the families of the uh, EMTs and the uh, guy that ran them over. He can go fuck himself. Exactly. Um, this next one is a video. Um, I showed it to you guys both before of the way the MTA is handling the on-go snow conditions. Apparently, it looks like they're handling it quite poorly. Um, this is a subway down on Tremont Avenue in the Bronx where the should, steps are completely iced over. You should just take notice of this little man with the cane that's attempting to go down these steps. And watch what happens to him midway. Because it's disgusting. Sl or a woman. And, and down goes Frazier. But she probably fell down four steps. With at her least, cane. At least four How steps. is this even a thing that should be allowed? I mean, in every train station, in almost every train station, I'm not going to say everyone because I haven't seen them in every one, but there are attendants that clean up the train stations. They take out the garbage, they sweep the floors, they're mm -hmm. everywhere. You mm -hmm. see them all over the place. Yeah. So how come these same attendants weren't shoveling or cleaning the stairs? Because it's the Bronx. Oh, sorry. But it wasn't the only, I mean, that one was just the one that was on the video. But there were many, many others that were in the same condition. Too many of them. Well, Way my situation is this, with this video. Now, I'm not an avid public transportation taker right um but the city was kind of put on notice almost a week in advance to be prepared for this yeah obviously in new york city we were actually quoted um 12 to 24 inches of snow <laughs> um we only got seven in certain areas which really isn't a lot but they still should have been better prepared for cleaning subways like this especially going under the going underground above ground they had them closed off so they were kind of a little anal on that but yeah. with this they should have still better prepared and on another angle do you know how much it costs to take a train or a bus these days was it like 275 275 in one direction and they'll so, look it's up it again. So my feeling is, if you're taking that much money out of the hands of the people who live here, how come, for days like this, they're not employing extra people or paying people overtime to come in and clean these things off so people are safe? I'm going to leave this one to you, Jim, first, because you can lead off on this one. I feel because they're just a bunch of tight asses who doesn't want to pay out the extra overtime money. I mean... You got to understand the, you know, the, the MTA is not only just, you know, a public service, but it's a business as well. You have to do right by your customers and your customers being the people who get on those buses every day and those trains every day. And if you're going to make it dangerous for them, one of these days, someone's going to put in a nice little piece of paper that says, guess what? I'm suing the fucking balls off for you. Because I'm going down one of your steps leading into your train stations, and I fell because you didn't de-ice the steps when you had ample warning 
with the oncoming storm to get prepared to clean. But they don't want to do it because they're lazy fucks who just want to line their own pockets. And in their eyes, it's, who gives a fuck? We don't have to deal with these people all the time. You'll deal with them, though, eventually when you go to sue them. Exactly. And then the case gets drawn out for like five, ten years. Exactly. that's how long it takes for the city to settle. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, that's the city we live in. Yep. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure why in this video, like people saw how bad the steps were, that they didn't try to like avoid them. Like they didn't try to go to a, a different set of steps or maybe the set of steps was just as worse than Could those. Be. I mean, but they should have called somebody. I mean, there's, there's people standing outside of these train stops for MTA, for checking buses and shit. Yeah. Why don't they call downstairs and say, hey, you need to get a fucking cleaner up here and clean this shit up? I don't know. Instead of taking their own life in their own fucking hands. A handicapped woman almost goes down four steps because the fucking steps are all messed up. I, don't know. I mean, it could be anything. Like It could be like this. You know, there's some train stations around that there's one set of steps to go one direction and another set of steps to go another direction. Maybe if they're going uptown, let's say, that's the only flight of stairs that they could take to go to the uptown platform. That's yeah, they probably all, why. They all cross over at some point. I mean, you never know. I mean, the way they have it all mapped out it confuses the fuck out of me, too. What about you? But no, I'm just in a busy place like that. You would just think with the amount of foot traffic that they have on those steps, that again, the attendants in the train station. Instead of sweeping the floor, they should be up there sweeping the steps or shoveling the steps. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how many times. Because me, I'm, I'm an avid MTA rider. I'm on buses and trains all the time. And I can tell you from my own eyes and my own personal experience that in situations like this, you got these fucking humps with their forty-two, forty-eight $48,000 a year jobs who are standing around by the... The, the booth bullshitting with each other while people are busting their asses going up and down their steps. It's sickening. It sickens me, it sickens everybody else, or at least it should sicken everybody. Well, that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> well, again, in local news, um, at 5 o'clock this morning, now, mind you, we're at uh, quarter to 12. See. Evening. Um, a young woman lost her life on the Williamsburg Bridge because the guy that was driving the car was drunk and slammed his car into a concrete divider in the middle of the Williamsburg Bridge. God damn. Um, according to the article, the car was split in half and she got tossed from the car as it was split in half. Um, the two idiots in the front seat uh, were fine. They got taken to a local uh, medical facility. Um, the driver was arrested for DUI, but she was just turning 21. She's a pretty girl, too. 21 years old and died day of her birthday. Unbelievable. Yeah, happy fucking birthday. But this is why, like, us as, a, as an older generation from... The millennials are a little bit more responsible than what uh, we see all the time. We were raised to no responsibility. We were raised to no, you know, respect and responsibility and loyalty and, you know, honesty, all that stuff. We were raised by that. But it's not even a matter of that. It's a matter of getting your, getting into a car with somebody who's been... Well, drinking and doing whatever they're doing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't say in my lifetime I'm not guilty of that at some point. Because if they're your friends, they're your ride home. You got to get home. Chance. You run out of money, you get in the car with your friends. And you go home. You know, you I mean, there's, chance, there's yeah. nights that, you you know, you're lucky you made it there. Sometimes there are nights that you don't remember how you got there. <laughs> it and, all depends, I guess. You know, I mean, now I have a daughter who's going to be 13. Oh, my God. That's scary, isn't it? <laughs> and the only thing you could say to them is, you know, I don't care what time it is, where you are, what's going on. If something goes on, do not get in the car. No. Call me. 
you know, well, get in a cab and I'll pay for it when you get home or... Yeah, no matter and what. And that's all you can keep, you know, that's all you could say. Yeah. I mean, I don't have, I personally, I don't have any uh, kids of my own, but yeah, I completely understand that. I completely agree. It's like, when it comes to the life of your child, money's not an option, you know. I live in Brooklyn. You're in the city. You're not feeling good. You don't want to get in a car with someone who drank too much. I don't give a shit how much the cab costs. You're taking a fucking cab home. I don't care. Money's not an option when it comes to the life of my child. That's how I feel. Well, switching off from that kind of death mm. to back to the MTA. Oh, the lovely MTA. Um, not only do they not clean their steps... But they are also raising the toll for the Verrazano Bridge oh. again. I what heard it? this. What is it, 18 now? Seven. It'll be $17 as of Sunday. $17 to go to that fucking the, borough. The land of shit. The land, <laughs> the land of shit. Now, mind you. It is. It's a bunch of shit have, piles. That's what I heard. I heard that like, Staten Island was built on diaper shit, practically. There have been articles in the past... That said, the bridge would have been paid off a long time ago with all the tolls and then all the raises and everything else. Yeah. Now they're repairing the bridge again. That's... It's like it doesn't even last six months. And Ooh. then they're back repairing it again. That's so crazy. That bridge has been under construction for like, I don't know, almost my entire life. I think it's going to like permanently be under construction like the BQE and the fucking Van Wick. Or like the Brooklyn Bridge that's been under repair since like 2010. Seriously. Um, apparently they voted in late January to increase tolls. And the people who live in Staten Island originally are only paying like $11, I guess. Wait, to go from, if you're a, if you're a resident of Staten Island to go into Brooklyn? If well, you're a resident of Staten Island, you get a discount for the bridge. You have to prove your residency. So they don't pay as much as, as the the traveler would to get across the bridge. That's probably why they act like assholes, because well, they're fucking entitled. <laughs> this part of the article is actually pretty funny. According to the fact sheet sent out by the MTA, those who use an easy pass will only have to pay anywhere from $11.08 to $11.52, with Staten Island residents paying about half that from five dollars and seventy four cents <laughs> to six fifty or six eighty four. What's with these fucking weird prices? Six eighty four it's all percentages. Thing. There's all some type of stupid percentage. Because nobody can really figure out what half a fucking seventeen dollars is. Now in um, all fairness, if they would just move the Christmas tree shop to Brooklyn. Yes I would never have to drive through that godforsaken place ever again in my whole life. So, if you're out there, Christmas tree shop people, think about putting a location closer to the wonderful land of Brooklyn. No, yes. Thank you. Finally, someone said it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Finally, someone had the, the vivacious uh, fortitude to say it. It's about fucking time. It's the only place worthy of going in Staten Island. I know. It's like, it's not, in, the mall is not even like the big go-to anymore because no one gives a fuck about the Staten Island Mall anymore. Christmas Tree Shop is the way to go. You bring that motherfucker to Brooklyn. You could take King's Plaza for all I fucking care. Just bring the Christmas Tree Shop here. But now they're also saying at some time in the near future that they want to charge both ways for the bridge because $17 is not enough. You know, you got to pay $34 round trip because the bridge has two sides and two levels and this, that, and the other thing. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> if, you really if you're going to raise the amount of the bridge, now, us Brooklynites travel to Staten Island, you should charge us. 850 one way and 850 the other way. Then you get your $17. Yeah, that's that is so fucking crazy that to go to that fucking shit bag borough, you got to drop almost $20 one fucking way. But 
what makes me laugh, you know, I mean, if you guys can afford me the time, what makes me laugh... Oh, don't worry, we have plenty. All right, beautiful. What makes me laugh about that whole thing is that I personally have known people who bitch and complain about the MTA raising the MetroCard fare, but don't really complain over the fact that the Verrazano Bridge is almost twenty dollars one way. It's like, oh, but they said they were going to raise the the uh, the buses and uh, trains too. Yeah, to, the to, whole whopping even, quarter. Yeah, but, twenty even you know. three bucks a uh, three bucks one way. But does that make any sense whatsoever? I mean, it's like you drive. You're not the one who's taking those buses and those trains all the time. Shouldn't you be bitching the fact that you're dropping almost twenty dollars to go over the bridge? Why are you bitching about the MTA when you should be bitching about the fucking bridge? Just think of it this way. That's the most expensive bridge in the five boroughs. Absolutely. Uh. You pay seven fifty to go through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel or to go over the Triborough or you go over the Whitestone, it's seven fifty. It's nuts. But I'd just like to add on, again, to the Christmas tree shop people, that if I have to pay seventeen dollars, that's cutting into my chunk of money that I'd like to spend in your shop. So if you move it to Brooklyn, I would have that extra additional $17 to spend in your establishment. Thank you, Christmas tree, pe- Christmas tree shop people. And take it from everybody else who's in the room currently. You better listen to her. You don't <laughs> want to be bullied. Well, think of it this way, though. It's just not Christmas tree shop. I mean, I like shopping there. It's a great place. But think of it this way, though. You got the Staten Island Zoo. The whole fucking borough's a zoo. <laughs> what difference does it make? Okay, the contained part of the zoo. There is the Prospect Park Zoo. You should visit there. Yeah, but I don't know if the Staten Island one is better than that one. It's not. I haven't been there in a while. So it might have changed. Um, yeah, I haven't been to the zoo since I was in the sixth grade, so I can't jump in on this. So. All right, so the last bit of our local news. See. As Christmas Tree Shop is trying to find... <laughs> Her phone number. Christmas tree. Sh- Are you kidding me? Find her phone number. They're scared to death. They're looking for fucking relocation plans. And we're we're gonna do a little <laughs> bit of a proud shout out for her uh, business. Yes, she yes. is the uh, proud owner of Missy Ann Sweet Treats. Uh, oh, you yes. can find them on Facebook. Um, the most creative, delicious pastries I've ever had. Well, thanks. And take it from me as well, I was never at all into pistachio cream anything really until until one night she made a pistachio cream cake. And unfortunately, we're, we are an audio podcast. You can't see that I'm a fat bastard. So, <laughs> yes. Believe me, people, he is. <laughs> Awful. See, I got them all choked up again. Awful. Yeah, choked up. <laughs> You're right. At least it's not the woman in the uh, bike helmet. No, but... So find me on Facebook or Instagram. Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the uh, page again? Missy Ann's Sweet Treats. You heard it right here. Missy Ann's Sweet Treats. Facebook and Instagram. Look that and fucking shit up or she will bully you. And the next time she'll be bringing she us uh, food in studio. Yes, I will bring snacks next time. And I'll by the out. way, just to let you know, so good stuff. I goofed again that uh, I did not announce... We are recording at the dungeon, live from Brooklyn, New York. Well, we're not really. Well, we're live now, but we're on location at the dungeon in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, so don't try and call in because we won't answer the phone. We'll exactly. Be you know, we're too busy yelling at each other because we're a kooky goof like that. So, the last segment, because we've mentioned food, is there was an incident. Wow, really? Hey. Would you rather out of the att- have it come out the attic or the basement? I don't know. You're sitting next to me. You please. got that right. <laughs> oh Sorry. no, you got the basement. The I'll take the attic, and she's <laughs> sort of stuck in the middle. If you look okay. This way. So we mentioned food. Oh, dude, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in my eyes. What the fuck, man? <laughs> hey, oh, who's um. choked up now? <clears throat> oh wow! <laughs> don't look at me. That's your man. Oh, well, that what? smells good. What is that? Febreze. Sweet. Shout out to the Febreze people. Febreze are the fucking best. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. 
<laughs> um, wow, that does smell fucking nice. I gotta get some of that stuff. All right, we have to retrack here. <laughs> yes, let's uh, focus here, people. Focus. Okay. Food. <laughs> yes. How many times have you gone out <laughs> for food, not had enough money, and some kind stranger or a member of our group or family has reached out to give you that extra money so you can eat? Well, like, uh, a lot of times, especially uh, my, you know, tough in-between work days, you know? So there was a, a group of mongoloids that um, was in this neighborhood. I'm not exactly sure what the restaurant was. Um, I think it was one of those private ones. Um, well, there was a, a guy... A diner or something? Or? Uh, I think it's a fast food joint. Oh, like a little eatery? <laughs> yeah, a little eatery. Somewhere on Foppish Avenue. Yeah. Um, and the guy didn't have enough money. So another a, a stranger offered to help pay for his food, and they got the shit kicked out of him. Wait, the guy, the good Samaritan is the guy? Got the shit kicked got... out of him. I'm sorry, people out there, but I just got pissed off hearing that. I think I really did. <laughs> now, how are you supposed to be like the, again, the good Samaritan, um, and do a good deed for the day? And they get the shit kicked out of you. I still don't understand why, though. Because they're fucking mutant, subhuman fucking animals who doesn't know how to live, doesn't know how to be human. And, to top it all off, not even does he get an ass beaten, but he gets robbed. Like, some illegitimate moron comes out of nowhere and just rapes him for his wallet and the money in his pocket and just, with a smile, walks as, out of the store. As he's laying on the floor, they go through his pockets. That's exactly what they do. They come at you like a pack of wolves. You got, say you, let's say roughly you got three people. Not including the one who's getting the shit kicked out of them. You get three people jumping this one guy. Two people are fucking you up while the other one is raiding your pockets. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. It, it, it's, I don't even know what to say anymore because listeners out there are going to be like, who is that fucking guy? He sounds insane. <laughs> so I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> But, I mean, like, it's just weird shit. It is. It, it and, really and, is. And people, we're talking about this because a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people, don't pay attention to the news. No. They don't pay attention to their surroundings. Um, and we felt, as a, as a crew, that every once in a while, we'll bring you this type of news. So... It's kind of easier for you to understand what's going on in the world around you. If you're trying to be ignorant, maybe that might not be a good idea. No. Because one of these days, they, they what's going to happen, they're going to pick a fight with the wrong guy. I mean, you see it on Facebook. You see it on Twitter sometimes. Like, this guy goes up to someone, attempts to rob him. But he turns out he's robbing, like, a fucking jujitsu instructor. And then he turns the fight onto the guy. Yeah. It's hysterical. But those, those are, are funny ass kickings, though. Those are funny, I have to say. Those are funny. And like, well-deserved. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, this is the reason why this episode was made. Um, there was a lot of discussion of why. Um, but we hope, uh, within future episodes, to be able to bring you this news every once in a while. Because it, it should be known. Absolutely. Like, especially... We Local need to stand news. up for our rights, first of all, for Bridges and MTA and all the stupid money-hungry motherfuckers from your city, organizations, government, etc. And then we also have to make you realize that there are a lot of stupid people out there. <laughs> and that's not stupid news. This is the serious part of yes, the news. Yes, this is not a lead-in segue into a stupid news uh, podcast. So... Any final thoughts, comments? Uh, fuck the MTA. Fuck Staten Island. Christmas tree shop come to Brooklyn. Uh, that was well said. <laughs> and well thought. And the giggle on the side. Yes, side giggles are always funny. <laughs> One more little thought is uh -oh. that if you're not from here, we don't want you to think this is the worst place on earth. Because we did discuss a lot of... Uh, Anti-Staten Island yeah, shit. Yeah, anti-everything, kind of, <laughs> you know, about the, the boroughs and, you know, that kind of stuff. There are good things that happen here. You know. Just, Not many, just but good. I, just thought I'd 
to put that out there. <laughs> I mean, we, we have all these sweet treats that we get to have later on, so. Ooh, sweet treats. That's one of the good things that comes out of Brooklyn. Yes. <laughs> Another shameless plug, but. It's shameless a plug. plug once Which again. Which I appreciate, by the way. What's the name of it again? Missy Ann's Sweet Treats. Yes. Look it up on Facebook and Instagram, or she will bully you. Verbally <laughs> and physically. It could also lead into She'll, an anti-bullying campaign. She will beat you with a meat, meat stick. I will not. Bullshit, I still got the welts. <laughs> you <laughs> deserve <laughs> them. What did I do? You walked up to me and just started beating me with a fucking meat stick. Not the meat stick you fucking <laughs> pervs are thinking of, you assholes. A Slim Jim. What he said. And not a not a Slim Jim like a... One that you use for a car, like a Slim Jim that in 7-Eleven. Well, no, one of those yummy ones. And not a Slim Jim that I used to be in 2003. And a sl- shameless plug for 7-Eleven, by the way. Yes, 7-Eleven. And a Slim Jim. And to Slim Jim, yes. Yes. And a shameless plug to my now anti-bullying campaign. Snap into it, people. Snap into it. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of Jim and a Good night, we'll fuckers. catch you all on the flip side.